In the previous lecture, we talked about complexity. In particular, we said that complexity is anything related to the structure of a software system that makes it hard to understand or modify the system. And that quote was drawn from John Osterhout's book. So none of the assignments you've done in our course or in 61A have really given you enough room to create what I would think of as truly complex code, where things become just deeply difficult to understand and modify. Now in project three in this class, you will have your chance to run into this problem. That'll be a project called Build Your Own World. Now our hope is that the project is small enough that you won't suffer through the complexity, but you'll begin to feel it creeping. And in the best case, you'll actually keep it under control and things won't be a big deal. So essentially in this project, you're gonna build a system in two phases. The first phase is to build a world generator. So it builds a visual picture of a world. And in the second part, you'll add interactivity to your system so that you can explore the world. So let's get a bit of a sense of how this complexity comes to be in this project. So given a random seed, that is a, a long, so it's just a larger version of an integer, you're going to, going to generate a two dimensional world of tile objects and that world needs to have rooms and hallways. So here's an example drawn from arbitrary students from, from spring 2018. So if you uh, provide to this method that you must support called interact with input string, the string in 343434s, the in means create a new world, 343434 means the random seed used to generate this world. So th this is seeding a pseudo random number generator. And then the S means this is the end of the seed, so it knows when to stop looking. The output of this function is drawn to your screen this world, which has rooms and it has hallways. Now this is the most basic looking game, more or less. You can try and do something fancier, but this is about the bare minimum of what you're gonna try and build. I'm not gonna talk about the project in great detail though, because it's covered in the spec. So in this video, what I'm gonna focus on instead in this lecture is how complexity arises while you're working on this task. So the next step, and to sort of see why the system is large, is that you're gonna to need to add some other features. So part two, the second week of the project, or the second five days of the project, uh, you'll, in this section, you're going to add an interactive keyboard mode. So there's a method called interact with keyboard, and the user can type in 343434s, and the same world will pop up. So there's two different versions. One where the game is played from a string, where the world is interacted with using a string, and another where the user types it in interactively and things happen on the screen as they type. And the second part of part two is you'll need the ability for the avatar. So everybody's world will need to have an avatar that can be moved using the keyboard. So if you push D, 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 that means move east four spaces and the description of the controls are in the specification. And so we can see that the avatar has moved four spaces to the right. So one thing that's very important and where some of the complexity starts creeping in is that you need to be able to handle movements given both by interact with keyboard, but also interact with input string. So if we start the game or the project up and we give it the string in 343434s ddd, it's going to create a new world with a seed and then move the avatar four spaces east and then return this world you see here as a TE tile two-dimensional array. So let's see an example of an actual project that someone in 61B last spring had where they tried to do what we called tactical programming in the previous lecture. They just kept trying to patch things up so that it worked. And in the end, they ended up with a piece of code that I consider deeply unsettling, okay? And the reason that it's unsettling is because it's very complicated, way more complicated than it needs to be. And so what I'd like you to do now is take a minute or two to reflect on what is complex about this code. And recall that when we say complex, we mean anything related to the structure that makes it hard to understand and hard to modify the system, okay? So pause the video, look at this code, and you don't really have to know how the project works to do this problem. Now I'll be curious to know what people come up with in the live lecture, but at least just sitting at my house by myself, the three answers I came up with is that first, it has this very complicated manual computation of west, east, north, and south. So when the user tries to go to the west, it needs to look west and see if there's a wall. 
And so there's this minus one here, and a minus one here, and a plus one here. And that is where the west, east, north, and south are computed. And it's just a little intricate. There's a lot of pieces here. And it's not totally obvious, reading this code, what's going on. I mean, if you think about it for a little while, you could say, OK, minus 1, that must be west, and so forth. But just reading this code, I find it hard to read. There's another thing, which is there's so many variables that need to be exact, manipulated in exactly some way. So we have to say the player's x center needs to go to the left. And then we need to set something equal to player and something else equal to floor. But then if we push s, it's this other thing where it's y, y center. And here now we have a plus 1, and so forth. And that means it's hard to really know what's going on. And it's very hard to modify, because I would have to change a whole lot of stuff if I change anything at all. And then there's also a bunch of repetitive code. We have steps plus equals 1 appearing in many places. And also, we have these hard-coded constants here. And it, even just the structure is just very repetitive. Okay. So what can we do to fix it? So what I'd like you to do now is think, what would I change? What helper methods could I write? How would I do this differently, just so that it feels better? Okay. You want to avoid code that is hard to understand, and you want to avoid code that's hard to modify. You want to make your code sing. You want to make it literary. You can read it like a story. This code cannot be read like a story. So some suggestions I came up with, I'm not going to live code them here, but what we could do is, for example, uh, the move.equals case. So when I say if move.equals if statement, it could simply set a variable equal to west, east, or whatever else. And then once that variable was set, it doesn't have to be a string. I mean, it could be an enum like you saw in the project two, or it could be a constant like I suggested in the KD tree uh, assignment. And then we could have a method called something like get the neighbor to the west, and that would return the tile to the west. So imagine every time that we have something that's trying to manually compute all of these coordinates, we're calling get neighbor and saying west or something, or maybe get neighbor com world comma west. Depends on how you've built your project. And similarly, if we wanted to avoid having to intricately set all of these variables, we could write a method, which is called move, where we give it a player and a world object and a direction, and it does all the manipulation of the player object and the world object and so forth. And in that way, the code now would read much easier. You could make it so there's only one copy of steps plus equals one. And you know, again, this is me just kind of uh, exploring something without writing code. But these are the kind of things that I want to try and do. Okay? So you should think about this, that we always want to decompose our problems into smaller pieces. We are not smart enough as human beings to be able to, to be out there manipulating minus ones and plus ones and all these little things in line. This should be delegating work to somebody else in a more concrete context so that we're not trying to decide how do we process the user's input, how do we compute the west direction, and how do we set the west direction, all this stuff all at once. You need helper methods. It'll make your code look way better, way, and it's way more likely to work. So uh, to wrap up this video, uh, one of the things that Osterhout mentions in terms of what he thinks complexity is, is that he, he says there's two primary sources of complexity. One is dependencies. Uh, it's when a piece of code cannot be read, understood, and modified independently. And secondly, there's obscurity, when there's important information that is not obvious to the reader. And both of those happen in the code that we just saw. You need to make sure that you are paying close attention to your pro a project and your program as you're building it, that you're thinking strategically, not tactically, so that you avoid having dependencies and obscurities uh, just popping up in your code and investing the whole thing so that eventually your code looks like this. This code is insanely difficult to debug. It's, it's just a pain to work with. And so if we think about our code, the, the observations I made in terms of obscurities and dependencies, I would say all of this complex manual computation of the west, the east, the north, and the south, and all these variables that need to be manipulated exactly so, that's a form of obscurity. It takes a lot of mental effort to really understand exactly what's going on here. And it's very easy for you to make mistakes. And the other thing I, uh, that I mentioned earlier is this repetitive code. I would call that a dependency. Because of the fact that we have all of these very fine details, if we realize, oh wait, this should have said floor, and this should have said player, I'm going to need to change the code in multiple places to fix a bug once. And that's a sort of funny type of dependency, but it is a dependency. It's a piece of code that cannot be modified independently. 
because there's repetitiveness between them. Okay, so that's an example of how uh, tactical programming can lead you astray. But with a little strategy in advance, building these kind of helper methods, you can make your life a lot better. Now, in the next video, I'll give you another example from this project, and I really, really want you to think about this carefully. Tactical programming has served you well, but on this project, you will have a much more interesting uh, and, and fun time if you're being strategic. Indeed, the entire point of this project is to try and get you to be strategic. So at the end of the semester, you'll realize as you're finishing this project, there's nothing truly fundamentally new that maybe you, you needed to know uh, from this course that made it possible. Like someone just from AP Computer Science from high school could probably do this project. But what I'm hoping is that you're going to do it in a much smarter and strategic way than you were likely to have when you didn't have so much experience.